of all our praise. Amen. Amen. Yes. Not just today. Yes. Not just today now. Yes. But we got seven days in a week and God is worthy yes. of it all. Yes. Let us bow our heads. Our Father. Yes. Our Father. Lord, we come to you at this hour realizing that you are God and beside you there is no other. Yes, sir. You're the one who paid the price for us to be present today in whatever form, shape, or fashion we're here right now. We owe you the thanks and the glory for it, Master. <laughs> but Master, as we stand before your altar, we ask you would strip us of all our self-identity that only you can be seen in the hearts yes, of your Lord, people. Yes. It's a dying world going to a land of the living, Master. Yes. And we have to have our business in your business. Yes. Our heart and our love and our mind must be in you, Master. Yes. It's the only way out. We ask you, Lord, to strengthen us. Yes. Give us that power that it takes to do your will. Families and husbands and wives and children and sons and daughters have to all have your deportment in their lives. And we ask you, Lord, and we know that it's through you and you alone. You're the only way. You're the only way we can make it. So we ask you to give us an increase in your word, Master, that we can hide it in our hearts to keep us from sinning against you. That when we need it, it'll come up, Master, we won't have to get our cell phones or our computers out to remember, Master. We won't have to call Pastor on the phone. But we'll have your word in our heart. That when we're enticed and when we're tempted to do the wrong things, your word will come up, Master, and save us from ourselves. We thank you. Bless you in a mighty way. In Jesus' name we do praise and thank you forever and evermore. Amen. 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 God is a good God and worthy yes. to be praised. Amen. Amen. We would like to look at a scripture in the book of John in the 16th chapter in his first verse, the number first verse, yes. where we find Jesus is the one in the midst of the conversation. He's the one giving the instructions. You do know that if you take an instruction, they need to be from him. Amen? Amen. Uh, I may be pastor, maybe <coughs> Pastor Greenwood, maybe Deacon Harris, or, but it, it has to be from God. Amen? Amen. Yes, sir. yes, yes, yes. It has to be from him. Yes, sir. That's 16 chapter and his first verse. Everybody there? Amen. Amen. We have these words in the first verse of the 16th chapter of the Gospel of John. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. These things have I spoken unto you, that ye should not be offended. Amen. Let us think about Christ's peace. Christ is peace. It's it's tied up in His Word. Amen. You can Amen. be seated. Amen. You can be seated. Yes. Christ is peace. Christ uh, came into this world <coughs> by free choice. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. He came with the purpose in mind, purpose in heart. And he wanted us to know and to understand who he was yes. in, in, in his life. Yes. He said that he was the true vine. Right. Mm -hmm. And that gives lure to that there are some other things out there that we can follow. Amen. Amen. There are some other things out there that we can be listening to. There are some other things out there we can commit ourselves to. Mm -hmm. But Christ identifies himself as the true vine. Yes. You know it is said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. I don't care what else you know. I don't care how much education you have or anything else that you have obtained. Christ is the only true vine. Amen? Amen. He's, he gave reference to his Father 
as being the husband man. You know, a lot of times we take possession of stuff and we say, who is it? It's ours. Get off of my land. Huh? Get your hands off of my car. Stop wearing my clothes. We take ownership of something that belongs to God. To God. To God. I, I give reference when I was a young man. I had this pretty Hawaiian blue truck. And uh, you know, I love my blue Hawaiian Chevrolet truck. And my kids was outside playing, and one of the little neighbor's kids decided they wanted to write on something. Amen. They wanted to draw lines on something. Yes. And when I walked around and seen the lines and the writing on my truck, my truck, you hear what I say, didn't it? Yes, huh? That's Amen. my truck. Amen. The demon started to rise up. Y'all don't know it, but he right in you. Amen. Huh? When, when, when your mind is telling you to do the wrong thing, there's them demons in you. Huh? And as I begin to express and swell up about my truck, the Holy Spirit, you got to have something in you for it to come out of you. Amen? Amen. Now what's more important, that truck or them little children? Okay. We played games all day. Truck still had the scratches on it. Went to the dump with the scratches on it. Amen? Amen. So we have got to realize that everything... Belongs to God. Right. He is the husband man for the things that we possess. We just the branches. That's right. Amen. Yes. Amen. We are offspring yes. of God Himself. Yes, sir. And when we start thinking that who we are and the majesty and the, the, the power that we have, being the offspring of God, all of our living, all of our beings come from Him. Christ said he was a true vine. The father was the husband man. And we are the branches. Y'all know anybody ever do any pruning? Y'all cut off a branch and never give it a second thought. But you don't go to the, to the, to the base and cut it, do you? So a branch can fall off and the tree still prosper. But what, what, what he's letting you know is that because I don't serve him, because I choose to do whatever I want to do, the vine is still going to grow. Yeah. It's still going to prosper. Mm -hmm. It's still going to be and do what God has purpose for it to do. Amen? Amen. Amen. Every branch in me, amen, amen, that bears not fruit is taken away. Y'all know it's some folks that y'all grow up with, and some of y'all family members and friends, close associates, gone. Gone, and you can't, you can't give reference to nothing, but that was your friend. What when, when about every day of life? Never telling anybody about Jesus Christ. Never trying to make a disciple for Christ. And got cut off in that avenue. You don't want to lose this life that's, that belongs to God and never do any deportment for him. You want to work for him. You want to talk for him. The scriptures say bear fruit. What do you think he's talking about? He's thinking about you changing somebody else's mindset. You hear people say crazy stuff and then laugh at them and walk off. When you hear your brothers and your sisters going down the wrong pathway, it ought to become a sweltering of sorrow and pain and hurt for the one that God has lived and died for. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yes. Jesus said, I am the true vine. Yes, Why not hold on to something that's true? Amen. There are so many things in this world for us to grasp that has no value at all. Amen. It's going to die away. You can be the best dope dealer in town. When they arrest you and lock you up, take all of your money, somebody else going to come behind you. Amen. There is nothing greater than the kingdom of God. All right, now. And when you glorify the kingdom of God as the kingdom of God, then you recognize Christ as the one and only True vine. 
in situations and circumstances and problems arise, all your first outset ought to be, Lord, help me. Lord, help her. Lord, Lord, Lord. From the heart. We do so many things from the surface. And we walk away. And for, that's why we can't keep nothing together. Because it's on the surface. I'll do it when everybody's looking. But when nobody's watching me. All right. Not realizing that God is the husband man. He knows about his business. You belong to him. He keep daily check on you. You ought not always be like that little baby of mine. That little baby of mine will roll, clap out of the bed on the floor and never give a thought about it if you weren't there to catch it or change it. How long God going to be catching you like you a little baby? How long he going to watch over you like you a little baby? How long he got to hold your bottle in your mouth and feed you? Paul gave reference to these things. That when I fed you, I had to feed you with milk and not with meat mm -hmm. because you weren't able to stand. Oh, you've been here long enough. You've been walking and talking, but you've been walking in the wrong direction, talking the wrong stuff. Mm -hmm. So I got to start from base one and deliver unto you. Yes. It is important that you see the word of God for what it is. Yes, not Brother Caper don't mount to a hill of me. Y'all did not know him, the biggest of y'all, 25 years ago. Right. And sure not did not know him 66 years ago. Yes, so he, he can't amount to too much. He didn't author you. He didn't finish you. Mm -hmm. So don't base your decision and your choices on him. Amen. Base it on the author and the finisher. Amen. When you push, when you push the message that Christ is pushing today, you'll find yourself. Bearing fruit or being taken away for not bearing fruit. Amen. God said, I'll purge you. I'll lift you. I already give reference to it. Pastor Greenwood did today in his speak. Amen. Yes. Pay attention. Listen to the things that's going to do. Elevate God in you. All right. What you saying? Elevate God in you. Because don't spend time trying to elevate yourself. Because when you elevate yourself, you have to move away from God. And he's the foundation of everything that you're going to do, everything that you're going to say, everything that you're going to go through. God is the foundation. And it seems critical. And it's critical to me each and every day of my life. I'm pressing. People say you say stuff and you say crazy stuff. But I guarantee you, it's got some roots that come from Christ. Amen. Amen. Let your conversation come from the word of God. Amen. You might paraphrase a lot of stuff. But let it have its roots in the word of God. Amen. The writer's pressing you and he said, look, when you in me and you're bearing fruit, I'm going to prune you. I'm going to horn you that you're going to bear more fruit. Scripture said that you bear much fruit, amen, more fruit. Because the word is what's going to clean you up. You've been taking baths all your life and still doing some of the same junk, still have the same crooked mindset. But the word of God will clean your mind up, clean your heart up, where you can serve God the way he wants you to. Glory. Give it to him. The word of God is what's going to clean you. Why do you think Jesus is speaking to you in this manner? Stick with, stick with him. The word say abide in me. Stay with me. You remember your first when you were first converted? How you, some of y'all was crying. Oh, the Lord to save me. Hallelujah. Woo! Yes. Folks, folks fanning you, trying to calm you down because you come to the knowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. Yes, yes. Yes. Come on, preach. Yes, sir. But then you got your diploma. Mm. 
<laughs> you graduated. And you became sophisticated. Word of God couldn't purge your heart no more. But Jesus is saying to us, abide in him. Stay with him. Don't let yourself be pulled away by yourself and no one or nothing else. It's critical. It's critical that we stay in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Because if you don't stay with Christ, you're not going to be productive. Come on. Amen. You're going to fall off. Amen. Huh? Yes, sir. Y'all know when y'all had a lot of money, y'all had a lot of friends? Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Good example. When you lost your money, you lost your friend. Uh -huh. Good example. <laughs> Good example. Huh? Yes. The lady at work said, when I get home on Friday, say, it's folks all in my yard everywhere. I said, stop buying that beer and alcohol at the liquor store when you get off work on Friday evening and see how many folks be at your house. Come on, come on. Yeah, yes, yeah, sir. She had a chance to come back and tell me and say, say, Mr. Cable, you sure were right. Yeah. When I couldn't afford to buy that stuff, they, they stopped showing up. Yeah, right. so. They would like some people following Jesus for the lows, amen, yes, sir. for what they could get out of it. Huh. But you're not going to be able to succeed Outside of Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't care how good of feelings or twinkles you may get in life. You'll never be able to survive outside of Jesus Christ. Huh? He said, I am the vine and ye are the branches. He that abide in me and I in him, the same shall bring forth much fruit. For without me ye can do nothing. And, and you know what? We, we, we don't see it. Our flesh and the kernel in the world is showing us so much stuff. It's gotten so now that we think a man kissing a man is normal. Uh -huh. It's normal. One, two women hugged up together, smooching. We think that's normal. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. My, my little 11-year-old son will tell you right quick, oh, something wrong with that picture. So don't you get so educated, so classified, so accepted that you can't tell the person, hey, what are you doing? Back here several years ago, the, 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 the news media was blowing up. Yes, sir. Blowing up. Because Janice Jackson had a garment malfunction and her breast came out on national TV. Woo! Right after that commercial, they saw two men marrying and kissing. Nobody said nothing. We have forgotten what the norm is. We've forgotten. Even the Roman Empire teach you that you cannot. You cannot. It crumbled trying to be the absolute. God is the only absolute. What he says Yes, it's yes. When he say no, it's no. And that, that's just simple stuff. Stop complicating matters with all of your man wisdom. With all of your gene genealogies. All your theologies. Concentrate and focus on the word of God. Not the theory of the word of God. We got a house full of books. Somebody wrote about the word of God. Or about God. And never open the book Come on, the Bible. that God sent you. Come on. All right, now. That the Holy Spirit moved on me in the right. You can't do nothing outside of him. If any man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and withereth. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Amen. Outside of Christ. It's critical. It's critical. My son asked me one day, he said, Daddy, why do you be hollering when you be preaching? You be hollering at the folk, Dad. I said, John was crying in the wilderness because he realized y'all got all them Pharisees and Sadducees, all the religious activities, and that Jesus stand before you, you don't even know him. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Come on. Amen. So I'm crying. I ain't mad. I'm not angry. I just know it's critical that you pay attention to the word of God. It is the power. 
You can sleep his time in churches when the word of God being preached. Amen. Right. Choir singing, everybody. Hey, he yeah. choir direct He said, Where are your hand? Clap your hand. Yeah. Come on, come but on. when the word being preached, uh -huh. the adversary that lives in me daily uh -huh. got a way to say, Well, you know you stayed up a little late last night. <laughs> Ooh, yeah. Come on. But Jesus is pressing to us that if we abide in him yes, and my word abide in you, yes, huh? Amen. How you going to get the word? You know, you know, today's message is just going to be a flicker of the word. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. If that's all you're going to get, this 20 or 30 minutes, you're going to be a very poor Christian. A very poor advocate, a very poor ambassador for Christ. I'm just like the burning bush Moses stopped and looked at. And he did a whole life of work behind his introduction. Amen? Amen. Amen. So when you see yourself abiding in the Lord and his word abiding in you, yes, Lord. you put God, I tell people this every day, you put God in odds with his word. He has promised to bless you if you do what he said. Yes. If you turn your life over to him, he promised to increase you, to magnify you. Yes. A lot of times we look at what, 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 what we call televangelist ministry, mm -hmm. but we don't have a clue or crack how much time and effort those people put in to getting to where they were. Time and effort over and over and over and over, day in and day out. A lot of people getting in the bed, they get in the automobile to drive to the next city or next town. Amen. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It takes an effort to increase or to be anything. You want your house to be the best house in the neighborhood? Work on it when you go there. Uh -huh. Amen. A paint you put on it two years ago could need to touch it up. When we apply the basic stuff, why you don't you laugh? Cause you know, oh, I don't want to hear that. She been on me about doing stuff for here, you know. I'm just saying. <laughs> but when you find yourself doing the things that's yes. gonna make life better, uh -huh. you'll find better. And if you find the worst. Then you have a piece of Christ in your heart. Amen. And you still have that big, beautiful smile. And folks be saying, what's wrong with him? I know I hit him with that brick. Huh? I know I hit him with that stick. But I have the peace of God in my heart. Not just on my lips on Sunday morning. Amen. Yes. But in my heart and the way I go. And this is what I do. This is me. What did what, what the songwriter say? You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't catch up with my, my, my praise, huh? You won't understand it. You won't know what, what motivates me to keep going. He used his physical life experiences to express how he got there. But when you use the, you're using the word of God, listen to Paul. Paul said it like this. Say, he told how many times he'd been shipwrecked. How many times he'd been let down the wall in a bag. Folks trying to kill him. But guess what he was doing? He was pushing the word of God. How many times somebody wanted to destroy you because you was a Christian, because you were pushing the word of God, because you wouldn't be quiet saying what Jesus said when they didn't want you to talk? Come on now. Come on. Amen. All right. Amen. Amen. Yes. My personal testimony is not about what I did in life, how, how big a fool I made of myself, uh -uh. but how I pressed towards the mark of a higher calling in yes. Christ Jesus. Come on now. When we find ourselves, when we find ourselves, the Pastor Greenwood already and the lady to it already. You might be in church 50 years, 40 years, 20 years, 5 years, 1 year, and have not touched them all. all right. Where God wants you to be. But the minute God opens your eyes, because you know what one thing he won't do? He will not give you something that's not from your heart. That's right. You know what Jesus said? Mm. Paul wrote it. He said, look, say you ask. 
and receive not because you act some myths. You ain't even believe yet. All you're doing is, is, is sounding good for the crowd. Yes, yes. Bouncing off the wall. My old Bible teacher used to say, boy, some of them proud still bouncing around the walls in him. <laughs> because they wasn't from the heart. That's why. It has to be from the heart. Amen. If you do everything I tell you to do because I told you to do it, say that. that ain't no good. Say that. It has to be from the heart. God has to, what, what, what Pastor Bowman said all the time, prick your heart. Yeah. Amen. And God is the only one who can do it. He wouldn't let us do it because we'll probably have you turn and flip like a cheese omelet <laughs> on a hot skillet. Come on, dear. But God Come on. is pressing us towards keeping his commandments. Amen. Amen. Doing what he wanted to do. Having the love that the Father he had one with another. That's the kind of love he want us to have. Yes, yes. Jesus loved the Father so he didn't think about doing what he wanted to do to the point of not obeying him. You remember what he said in the Garden of Gethsemane? Mm -hmm. Lord, let this cup pass. Yes. Amen. It's pressing me too hard. Let it pass. Yes, yes, yes. He flipped. Say, Father, not my will, but your will. That's right. And that's what each and every one of us have to have that commitment in our heart to do God's will above our own will. And we got a long ways to go. We got a long ways to go because all of our life we've been taught to do what we want to do. Please ourselves. And the word of God tells us that we ought to be focused on the things of others. More than the things of ourselves. Mm -hmm. yep, Lord. When we allow ourselves to be able to keep God's commandments, huh? And abide in His love. And, and look, Jesus said, Jesus got, got excited, told the folks, say, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. If you love me, you know, we, we can, he really like, brr, brr, brr. He got over there in Matthew, he said, not everyone that said unto me, Lord, Lord. What's going to enter into the kingdom of heaven, amen? amen. Somebody crying, oh, Lord, 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 and they ain't going to get in. <laughs> come on, there, come on, come on. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, going to enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father, yes. which is in heaven. Yes. Yes. He's pressing us. He's giving us. And he's ask, not asking too much. He's asking just minute stuff according to what he gave. No man, no man has greater love than this. What? That a man lay down his life for his friend. He gave up his life for you to have an opportunity. For you to praise him, for you to exalt him. He gave his life. He's worthy of all your praise. He's worthy of all your honor if you just die. That's right. Kill yourself. Paul said it like this. I am crucified. You know what crucifixion is. Amen. With Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Look at that. You, you in twain, yet not I, but Christ that liveth in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live to the glory of the Son of God who gave himself for me. See, we got it twisted. Our ancestors got it twisted. And we've been taught so long to look out for yourself. Amen. Do for yourself. A lot of times we'll do it like this. My mama, you tell me, say, first law of nature, it, 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 uh, or she, no, she said, charity begins at home. My friends say the first law of nature is self preservation. <laughs> but watch out. When I started studying the Word of God, I said, What nature are you talking about? <laughs> then y'all, y'all, Marsha read it to y'all today. <laughs> that you're a new nature. <laughs> you are, the old man is dead. Now a new man live in you. Reach down and grab the new man and never turn him loose. He's the one that believe in Jesus Christ. He's the 
one that give his life to Christ. Take that old man and chunk him as far as you can. Forgive me for my English, but throw him away. Get rid of him. He is your worst enemy. And you've been looking at your friend girl all this time thinking she was your enemy. Amen. But it's in you. Yes. The peace of God is going to get you, don't care, going to carry you no matter whether you're going through or whether you're not going through. Whether people lying on you or whether they're not lying on you. Come on. Amen. But it comes from within you. Through the word of God. Amen. 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 Captured in the word of God. Yes. Jesus said, if Ye are my friends if ye do whatsoever I command you to do. Yes. Quit claiming Christ and doing what you want to do. Yes. Doing what other people want you to do, what your Say friend, that. what you want, what your children want you to do, what your mom and daddy want you to do. When you start doing what Christ wants you to do, then you can claim him. All right. That's when he's gonna claim you, amen? amen. Amen. Christ didn't call you. His servant. He called you his friend. That's right. And when he called you his friend, he put you in the same bonds with him. Amen? Amen. Amen. He put you in the same rim with him. Amen? Amen. Let's look at uh, 16, uh, verse 31. 16 chapter. All I gotta do is turn one page. It ain't gonna be very far away. Amen. Amen. Huh? Jesus answered them, mm -hmm. Do ye not believe? Huh? Behold the hour cometh. Yea, and is now come, that ye shall be scattered, every one to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone. Because the Father is with me. All them friends and associates and acquaintances you got. That's right. Jesus had some. He called them himself. Picked them out. Hand picked them. And they left him. What you think about you? Amen. These things I have spoken unto you. That in me ye might have peace. Peace. In the world ye shall have huh? tribulations. But be of good cheer. Huh? I have overcome the world. It has already been conquered. The things that we're finding hard to do, so stressful to do, has already been conquered. Conquered in Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. you can understand better when he, he laid it out. He said, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Because I no longer seek my own self, but the will of my Father. And when I find myself Wrapped up, tied up in Christ's peace, then I find myself recognizing what He has done for me. First Peter four says, "For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind." Watch this: for he that suffers in the flesh, he that kill his flesh. He that don't do what his flesh say do. He that don't act like his flesh say act. Yes. Mm. Huh? Yes. Kill yourself. And let Christ live in you. Yes. Because he's the one that went to Calvary's hill. Yeah. Huh? He's the one. Yes, sir. He's the one. He's the one who went to Calvary. 
People talking mean. You know, you can't hardly stand for nobody not to pronounce your name right. But Jesus went through all of the abuse, all the name calling, all of the belittling for you and I. Amen. He knew. He had a full concept of what his father's will. Do you not know that if you study the word of God and you meditate on the word of God and you pray yourself in the word of God, you'll have you you'll come to a better understanding or a full understanding of what God is expecting of you? And then when you see it, it's, it's, it's like, you know, when you when you are a novice and you don't know, when I was a novice, my Bible teacher said to me, because I just believe in the word of God. Don't tell me nothing but what the word of God said. He, he said, boy, yeah. Yeah. boy, yeah. he got my attention. Because you know, I was a young man, you don't like too much like to be called no boy then. Right. But he called me boy two or three times. Say, don't you let that Bible stop you from going to church. Now the old man gone crazy. What are you talking about? How the Bible going to stop me from doing what the Bible tells me to do? Yes. When I became a man and I saw what go on in these so-called churches around here, uh -huh. all the stuff that they're doing and that ain't none of it of God. Oh, I can stay at home. I ain't got, I ain't got, I ain't, I ain't, there ain't none of them right up there nowhere. He going with her and she going with him. Preacher got two or three girlfriends on the front row up there, you know. It ain't about them. It ain't about them. It ain't about them. It's about serving God. From your heart, amen? From your heart. He did what was right according to the will of God. He suffered through everything that God had appointed to him to go through. Now I got to suffer through whatever God laid before me. You got to suffer through whatever come before you in life, but still admonish God as Lord and Savior. Yes. Let everybody know who you know. Let everybody know who you are. Because this is what happened. When he finished, when he finished the course that the Father had given him to do. As he hung there between heaven and earth, he said, Father, it's finished. It's finished. The folks begin to look crazy around there because things start happening. See, God, God will make things crazy when you obey him. Amen? Amen. People, people wonder what, what in the world going on with him. God has promised Never stop crying to him. Never stop pleading to him. That's why you had to say this every day. Man should always pray and not to faint. When God delivered the children of Israel out of Egypt, his answer to them, he said, I have heard your cry. Don't stop crying. Don't let nobody tell you that you, you, you I done cried enough. Don't stop crying until God has... Visualize himself and what he wants before you in front of you. Amen. 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 Don't stop crying. Yes, yes. But when Jesus said it was finished, it was finished. They took him and put him in a borrowed tomb. And I love the part that it was borrowed. Because he wasn't going to need it always. Amen. Amen. He wasn't going to need it always. Preach. He laid down. Them girls got up early in the morning. You know, that's what I love about women. They, they, they committed to what they're going to do. Yes. Yes. Early in the morning. Said, we're going out here and we're going to anoint the body of our Lord. Well, we're going to do it. They had the Merlin and spices and stuff they was going to put on his body. But when they got there, they found out they didn't pay quite much as attention to the Lord as they should have. Amen. Because yeah. yeah. they had it. They, they could have got on the clock. Amen. Friday, Saturday, Huh? Son? Oh, he said he three days. He's going to be out of that. Mm -hmm. yeah. They much like us. Hey, Amen? We ain't going to pay no attention to him until he come back. Uh -huh. We ain't going to realize him until he's looking at us. Come on, Dad. Come on. Man. Come on. Yes, Lord. <laughs> yes. They, 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 they got down there and they look. Oh, and they, they, you know, they contemplated within themselves, amen? amen? You know, they put them, them Romans put that big stone there. They seal that thing up with a big stone. Watch the old feeble wind. Who's going to roll this stone away? 
Somebody got to move the stone. Somebody got to let us in there. I don't know whether they was talking about getting the Roman soldiers to do it no way or what, but they'd already been kicked back. They got down there and they looked, the stone was already rolled back. And all they could see was the clothes in there where Jesus was wrapped up in. Oh, what has happened? What has happened? Oh, what did I come to anoint the body of my Lord? Where he at? And they look around and the scripture say they, they saw a man and supposed he was the gardener. Say, hey, will you tell me where you laid him? Right, look, 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 look. <laughs> Woo, I don't know what it ought to give you goose pimples yeah. to realize that you're looking into the heart and mind of the power of God yes. and thinking it's a God. Yes. Hmm. He said, Mary, oh Lord, uh -huh. when he speak to you, mm -hmm. when he speak to you, yes. recognize who he is. Recognize who he is. But he did one thing else. He communed around him. You remember the, you know, one, one story I heard when I was a boy about Jesus when, 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 when the, the boys were walking down the road and Jesus just joined himself to him, Just coming in, just, just hooked up with him like he was a normal man, you know, after his resurrection. He coming in, hooked up with them boys and walking down the road and when they got down the road and, and he, he, they, he disappeared out of their sight, them boys say, did not our hearts burn within us? Yes, Lord. They thought Jesus was a stranger in the land, amen? Mm -hmm. Thought he didn't know about the crucifixion. But Jesus had already told them, he told them in our scripture, that they were going to be scattered. Mm -hmm. He got down there and he said, look, all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. And then he said, y'all go do what I told you to do. Please, ma'am, and please, sir, go do what I told you to do. Forget about what you want to do, how you want to work it. Go do what I told you to do. Be blessed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Amen.